What's happening? This is Avadon, and welcome to this very special episode of Beats for Breakfast. Um, this episode is in honor of today, Good Friday. Um, as many of you already know, I am a Christian, and today, today is a beautiful day. And I wanted to really honor this day by having an interview with my cousin, who is also a Christian, and he's also a gamer as well. He's also heavily into music, which I felt was a perfect opportunity to have him on for this podcast. Well, this episode, podcast, whatever you want to call it. So I hope you guys enjoy this this, this discussion. Um, if this is a topic that may be offensive towards you, this is the purpose of this portion right here. So you have the choice and the opportunity to um, find something else this Friday morning to entertain your time. Or if this is something that you're open to, to listen and open for the discussion, I hope you're blessed by it. Have a good day, everyone. Peace. What's happening? This is Ever Done, and welcome to another episode of Beats for Breakfast. Today is Good Friday. Well, the not the day I'm recording this, but the day you're watching it is Good Friday. And I have here a very, very special guest. Um, this is actually family, real family. And this is Yofi yeah. Smith. So, Yofi, what's going on, man? How you been, bro? What's going on, man? I'm doing just great, man. I'm really honored to be on this show, man. You know, I subscribe, I watch this, and... Uh, you know, you called me and said, uh, could you do an interview? And I said, I'm game. So uh, here we are, bro. <laughs> nah, so funny story. It's like, Yofi and I go, of course, we go way back because it's like he's older than me. But he, he know me since I was like little bit baby. But we've uh, always been on opposite yeah. ends when it comes to playing video games. You know, the yes, old sir. retro games, you know, the Sonic games, Streets of Rage <laughs> games. Like we've going back even the super mario games like you, you notice we we bet you sega a lot because we we both grew up in yeah the sega, that was sega our household. thing that was that was what we did <laughs> so back in the day man so so definitely but um for the people that don't know you who is yofi smith yofi smith that's uh that's my channel uh you guys can look at that and subscribe right now we're going through a process of of really changing things up as far as the way that we get the content out but Yofi Smith, that's a Christian content channel. I started it quite a few years ago. I think maybe five years ago, about when uh, you and I started talking more in depth about Christ and, and how he's influencing our lives. And um, I'll just give you this short testimony just for people who, who don't know my channel, who don't know anything. Uh, what, what happened is, is that I got saved when I was 17, you know, um, but there wasn't much of a change. I still went back, I went to my friends and I'm bragging about it. However, you know, I'm still trying to fit in, smoking with people, even though I don't even like smoking, you know, that's what I was doing. And uh, even after I joined church when I got in college, you know, I started preaching the word. There were still certain things that I did, like uh, my anger outbursts and, uh, you know, I was addicted, heavily addicted to porn and a lot of stuff. So um, about five maybe five and a half years ago this man contacted me with uh some weird gospel stuff and i'm just like this kid's crazy man he's new he doesn't know what's going on but uh you know he's saying things like you should it's easy to love your wife and it's easy to live the way jesus lived and i'm like this guy's crazy uh come to find out you were right and um you know i was really starting to learn some things about god that i never had you know i've memorized the scripture but i started to gain this relationship with god and i'm like god you know why should i be alone in this why don't i share what i'm doing so the idea of a youtube channel came up and that's what i do i just start to share the relationship aspect of what i go through if i have a question and i ask the lord and he reveals it to me i just say hey let me find a way to reveal this to the people so that we can grow together because if we're a body, you know, we should all be growing together, not this section over there and that section over there. So, uh, Yofi Smith, that channel, I just, 
I share what I what I'm doing and I share what I'm learning and it's a great relationship experience you know we just grow together and uh, it's grown the channel's grown and uh, I think that the more that I grow the more the channel's going to grow so uh, that's Yofi Smith in a nutshell nice definitely yeah it's this this dude called me you put it nicely you called me an idiot <laughs> I did I did I just said this this kid, he needs to keep living. You know the cliches that we say? If he just keeps living, he'll find out, you know, like like Satan will teach him a lesson. And, and what kind of prayer is that, you know, to pray for your, this is your brother here. Even if he is new, why would you just say, well, he'll learn, you know, why don't, why don't you let him be delirious in, in, his, uh, in his hope, you know, that he has and you can live this way and you can live without sinning and i'm just like you know he'll learn he'll learn once he starts sinning and it was it was uh it wasn't a good it wasn't a good time for me to uh to be preaching the gospel that way but um you know you do what you're taught and i was taught certain things uh by the world and and by uh certain videos i was watching and you know people i was following and not to say that uh everybody's bad you know it's not bad to follow people or anything like that what i'm saying is is that if you watch something or if you put something in your mind that's what's going to come out of your mouth and uh you're an idiot is what was coming out of my mouth <laughs> i would say it's like a lot of people don't necessarily understand that it's we're all taught by life like for the moment we are born to the, this very moment now even you know whether you're watching this whether you you are of the walk of the faith or not it's like we're all taught by life we all learn have learned from life and in many cases a lot of us have allowed life to speak louder than what god actually teaches and yeah. those of you i know you guys know that i'm a christian the reason why i'm also doing this is because i wanted to do something for good friday you know it's a great day i know today if y'all watch this on today y'all know I'm, i was super hyped you know i'm super hyped for the final Fantasy VII remake and everything that that came out today and i'm happy to play that <laughs> but at the same time um which I, I will be watching through your channel because I'm not buying it. <laughs> but um, I wanted to do something different and to address something, another side that I feel a lot of content creators feel is a fine line that they don't want to touch. And I feel as though I am very comfortable with sharing this aspect of myself because at the end of the day, this is more important to me as I grow and the older that I get because video games, music, business, all that, all that is, is temporary. All that, yeah. all that fades away. So that's why I've, you know, take here and there. And, you know, even to what Yofi said, it's like, I have learned different things. And it's like, even as I've grown, like things can be a bit more difficult than I expected from when I first, got in my walk but at the same time i didn't let my life experiences change my perspective and change my mind say like, oh okay like i would never tell somebody hey you know this is going to be hard for you because i missed the mark i feel like that's a high form of arrogance and pride because you fell at a point you now going to have to put that barometer for everybody else and that is just not cool so that's why i just said you know i'm going to take the time to you know, the times that I did fall, get up, walk differently and walk stronger. And that's the way that I feel as though is in what I've learned is the best way. And you can always learn. It is. It is. It really is. And, and that's where we differed uh, more so in the beginning, not so much now. But um, I was preaching my life experiences. But, you know, as a Christian, that's not what I'm called to do. That's not what you're called to do. We're not called to preach our life experiences, because if we're doing that, we're not preaching Jesus's message. We're preaching our own. So uh, I was preaching to the point of I'm having issues, you know, in my marriage or I'm having issues with my kids. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, my son was diagnosed with autism. So uh, my son is 12 years old now one of my sons i have four kids but uh one of my sons he's four he's 12 years old yet 
I haven't had a full conversation that the things that we're doing right now, I didn't have that. So I was a bit resentful, you know, like I was in the mindset of God allowed this or, you know, he's trying to teach a lesson, you know, all those those uh, lessons that we get. So um, when I have somebody call me up saying, you know, God doesn't orchestrate that stuff. That's not the way that God is. God doesn't he, he's not trying to teach you through this. So when I have Abaddon calling me up with that kind of stuff, I'm like, well, he doesn't experience what I experience. So that's why he's wrong. You see, I'm preaching from my experience rather than what the word of God actually says. So, you know, like you said, that sometimes we let our experiences speak louder than the truth of the word of God. I can't look at my experience and say, this is how God is because life showed me. Well, God created this whole universe he created life so if i'm going to get my life experience or my teachings from somebody it's going to have to be from him before it comes from what i experienced yesterday or what i will experience tomorrow so i think that that's really where a lot of <clears throat> excuse me where like a lot of i'll say like religious activities separate you know there's nothing wrong with religious activities we just have to be careful about how we try to place God in that based on our experiences instead of what what he says you know because we'd find out that there's a lot of things like some people are are very condemning of what we're doing now you know based mm -hmm. on experiences not on what God says so you know that's a whole nother sermon man I don't yeah, even want to get we're into gonna it go ahead and just shift gears because for those of you who don't know my cousin and I can easily go down rabbit holes with these discussions three hours easily easily and we're not trying to keep you guys for that long so um as um we know we spoke you do have a nintendo switch and it's something that you own a switch now because you didn't own gaming you didn't you didn't own no you didn't own i said game you didn't own gaming you didn't own new gen consoles it's like your first next generation console outside of you you want to consider the wii u so i right. wanted to i wanted to really just ask you like, what are your thoughts on gaming music today as opposed to retro games? Okay, well, um, yeah, you guys, you know, I, I didn't, uh, and if you go to my channel, you guys will see that there's a reason as to why I did stop playing uh, games because, you know, it wasn't good for me. As I said, um, you know, one of my sons, his first words to me was Hadoken. So uh, when that happened, I pretty much figured that, uh, you know, you might be, you might be playing a little bit too much here, so uh, I did need to back up. It wasn't, it wasn't very healthy because I only played the violent stuff, you know, and uh, I wasn't a very kind person uh, when I did that. So you know, for personal reasons, I did back up, and uh, you know, I still had my my Wii, and then uh, my Wii U and my Switch, and you guys know that was all because of Smash Brothers. Whenever Smash Brothers came out with a new one, I had to get it. So um, you know, I, I still. I don't really play it like right now and uh, it's embarrassing because my sons still like to play a little bit so um, it's embarrassing when I don't crush them like that I try to engage a little bit but you know I uh, it, it, I, I can feel myself losing it you know so uh, but I know what happens if I get too deep into it so but uh, the music <clears throat> I still hear the music and and I don't want to sound negative, but uh, I'm using the word lazy when it comes to certain music these days. And that's because uh, if you look at certain retro games, uh, the quality of the music is not as good, but as far as the sound. But when you have a lack of technology, what that does is it causes the people who are working on it to become more close-knit because the music had to tell a story. And, you know, I'm very story-driven. You know that I have some novels that I write. I love character arcs. I always try to help people out. So when you talk about music telling a story, it doesn't have to do that now. So even if you get your greats, like your Yuzo Koshiro's or your Yatsunori Matsuda's, you know, from old school when they do something today they don't have to tell the story as much because you have voiceovers you know you've got 
all this cinematography going on. Let's just take, let's go back to uh, an old game. Let's let's take, uh, uh, if you go to the Shinobi series, okay? Uh, if you have the Shinobi for Sega, then what they have to do with that is tell more of a story with the music because there wasn't any dialogue. Today, if they were to make a Shinobi game, there's more dialogue. So now, the music doesn't have to fit it as much. The music just has to keep you on the game. So now musicians are more concerned with keeping you playing than just actually getting connected to the actual game. I'll give a great example. You know, Shinobi might not be as recognizable to some. Let's go to Final Fantasy VII. You were talking about how excited you are for that. When you have a game where the main antagonist theme is one winged angel you got to remember that's his theme you know sephiroth when you're playing that you could actually get anxious fighting against this guy because the theme they put so much into that you know uh, uh uematsu did that so i was just like to put that much emphasis on a character now people are more drawn to his story why does this character have such a theme? They don't have themes as much today. They just have music. Now, of course, you've got better instruments. You've got better quality of sound. But the music artist doesn't have to put in as much work as far as telling a story. When you get uh, Tekken, you go to Kazuya's theme from Tekken 2. You know, it's called, the very title is called Emotionless passion you know when you think about that it's just like wow why would you have a theme like that well obviously whoever did the music had to research his character more right so to make a theme like that you had to make a theme that describes his character and that's all we had back in super nintendo and and playstation one and that's all we had we didn't have kazuya giving his life story or from the horrible story of tekken 7 sorry guys but from the horrible story of Tekken 7, we didn't have an interviewer interviewing Heihachi Mishima and him telling the whole story. This is going to be a flashback, and we're going to do this, and we're going to say that. We, we didn't have any of that. All we had was a small bit of movements from the characters and the music to tell the story as to what background this is or what kind of person that is. So I think that back in those days, there was a lot more thought into how am I going to describe this character how am I going to describe this setting you know if the setting takes place in Japan am I going to have Japanese style music so now you get into your Yuzo Koshiro's who did Streets of Rage which was obviously 80s beat music you know obviously he's sampling some things here but that same guy did Shinobi which was clearly Japanese oriented so he had to think about the settings and all types of things. I don't really see that as much today. You're, you're absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, it's funny because it's like, I feel like it's some of the greats. The, how should I put this? It's really the greats who are doing it the same thing now. Like Umatsu, he's back on Final Fantasy VII Remake. And the way he's doing the music now, he's more, like, as you say, he's more telling the story. It's like he's taking the film scoring route. Right. Where the music plays at different points. Like, I played the demo of it, and the bombing mission is virtually different than yeah. we played it growing up. Now, when you play it, he has music speeding up at, at different points, slowing down. Like he changes up the whole dynamic of it, and it feels fresh. It doesn't feel like they just repackaged this in an HD package, gave higher quality music, and just slapped it on and gave it away. It's like they took a lot of time and care, as if they as as if this was 1997. Um, Yasunori Masuda, as you mentioned, um, who did Chrono Trigger. He did a recent game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, 
And right. even in that game, that game's soundtrack is amazing. Probably my favorite. Actually, yeah, it is. It's my favorite soundtrack on on the um on the Switch. Actually, like from a triple A uh, from a triple A game, it's my favorite soundtrack on the Switch because I remember that one. Huh? I remember that one. We were talking about that, and, yeah. and you got that video up there. Yeah, it's like there's so much because Masuda puts so much into that. Like you have like dramatic music that you have music that is lively like Masuda put a lot of care into that soundtrack and I know it's a shame because a lot of people probably don't really care for the Xenoblade uh, series but at the same time it's like I respect the music in all the series right. so that's why I definitely do agree like music tends to be lazy because as I've discussed previously in other episodes a lot of the music today is not memorable Right, exactly, and that's where where you fall victim to we're just trying to get something out here, and it seems, forgive me for sounding this way, but it seems like a cash grab with a lot of the music today. You know, a lot of us, we're, we're millennials, you know, mm -hmm. some coming up, Generation uh, uh, Z and such. However, when we're growing up, we remember the themes. I can pull up a YouTube video right now of an old theme, I want to download that game and I want to play it again. I want to experience everything just because of the the music and that was nostalgia. there. The game could be horrible, you know. Take a really bad game for PlayStation One. Take um one of the worst games, Dragon Ball GT Final Bout. Okay, Interview if you remember over, that game, <laughs> that's over. a horrible game. It's a horrible Dragon Ball Z game, GT, whatever you want to call it. It's it's a horrible game. The ones on Super Nintendo were so much better. But the music in that game was actually good. So they put forth a lot of effort because they had to make up for the fact that they really could not portray Dragon Ball the way that they needed to on this PlayStation 1. They tried to make it 3D, and, and 3D games on PlayStation 1 were very limited. So the music... Man, people are like, this game is bad. It's it's all across the board. This game is bad, but this music is good. You know, like that's that's what you can agree on. We hear the music of the old times, and we know that this is a good soundtrack. Like uh, you were mentioning Yasunori Mitsu. That's my favorite uh, composer, by the way. So, um, good choice. Because he did one of my all-time favorite RPGs of all time. He did Xenogears. You know, before he did the the Zeno Saga and the Xenoblade Chronicles. He did Zeno Gears. Now, that's what got me. If you're a 12 year old playing that game, you know, like, uh, th there's so many. The story is just amazing. And that was actually supposed to be, I know that this is not an info section, but that was supposed to be Final Fantasy VII. But, you know, Cloud and Sephiroth came in and cut Zeno Gears' legs out from under him and they took all the budget from him. So, but the music in the game makes you just remember these characters. What do you remember most about? your favorite characters and chances are if you play that theme put on chrono's theme right now you do you remember it yeah easily so and you know what that that kind of leads me to my next question to you and we as we both except we both grew up in music based homes you know i'm not gonna go too deep into that but we both grew up in musical based <laughs> homes that's another rabbit hole in itself. Oh, yeah i'm not trying to go down that hole but um, I wanted to really ask, do you feel growing up in that type of environment contributed to our views and our standards when it comes to music? That's a really good question. Um, I'm going to say yes and no. Uh, because look at our brothers. Our brothers don't really have the same appreciation for music that we do, you know? we just so happen to take that gaming route and i think that we took that gaming route because you know we're kind of the the younger of our family and uh so while everybody else is trying to do other things we were that type that grew up in that exact part of life where the video game consoles were i'm not going to say in their prime i think that video games are amazing today but we're in that time where if you spend time on an rpg you gotta level up so that song is getting stuck in your head 
we're rage quitting but we didn't we didn't rage quit we come from the times where you're going to keep playing this game until you win you know we didn't quit so all of this music is going to have more of an impact on us than the music today because people will either quit or they're going to wait for the next game to come out it's not going to be as memorable to them you know they didn't spend how many times do we see it on every rpg the 99 hour count you know they didn't spend 99 hours playing these games so i think that that had more of an impact than necessarily just our music you know families because we did have we did grow up around that however it did give me more access to if i wanted to touch a piano you know all i had to do is just go into you know if i if i wanted to copy the drum beat from this song i would i would be able to learn that so i think that that influenced it to make it more but i think the real issue was that it's the time period that we grew up in we just grew up in that time where music it, it was it was, it was more of a exactly it was it was it was just it, it was so much it was essential to making a good game now you could have bad music people don't care they'll just put on another soundtrack behind the game yeah and a lot of people say that like a lot of people have stated that they don't necessarily listen to uh the music so much when it comes to playing a video game and i said you know what while that may be true I made a very bold statement um, a few weeks ago on the Chillcast, and I said, every classic game has an iconic soundtrack. Right. Not every iconic soundtrack is a classic game. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot That's of people, th that goes over some people's heads. It's like, if you look at iconic games, their soundtracks are stellar. Every yeah. single one of them. And like, every, like you say, best games of all time. Like we mentioned Chrono Trigger, amazing soundtrack. We mentioned yeah. Final Fantasy VII, amazing soundtrack. You even go back to the Super Mario games, Super Mario 64, amazing soundtrack. There are so many games that are iconic that have amazing soundtracks. Zelda Ocarina of Time, amazing soundtrack. So it's like- One of the best games of all time, <laughs> so you know? If you go down that list, these games have all amazing soundtracks. And that's why, you know, for me, you know, growing up in just the homes we grew up in, just hearing different types of music, you know, depending on what day it is, whether it's a whether it's Saturday morning, you you cleaning up. We all know what music's playing right. that, that that morning. You don't know, <laughs> and they'll uh, wake you up to something new that's going on, you know, downstairs or something, and and you wake up to some new music. Exactly, and it's like you learn intricacies and and stuff with different types of music, and you just even learn how to hear things differently. It's for right. me, I growing up in that time and like my household for me, it definitely played a role because certain music these days when I hear them in video games, I've noticed for me personally, I get bored at certain video games. Yeah. If the soundtrack doesn't doesn't capture me, I get bored of a game fast. And I think right. that's Well that's our generation. Yeah. Possibly. I I'll give it that. I'll give it that. I'll give you that. I'll definitely give you See, that. today's generation, they don't need that. They don't, they, they, they'll have a boring soundtrack and it doesn't matter because something new is coming out in another day. You know, for them, it's something new. For us, this is what we had. We had to actually learn to appreciate it. You know, what, what's going to happen? If I don't like this game, I'm going to turn this game off and open up my cell phone there are like 45 billion games that i could just you know open up we didn't have that growing up you know especially games were expensive so if you got this game you're going to play this game so it better capture your attention and i don't think that the developers and the producers have to do that now they do not need to have their the people's attention they do not need to do that you know, whereas, and I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds like a rabbit hole, just, just indulge me for just a second. You mentioned Ocarina of Time. You know, when you have a game like that, they're trying something new. They're doing 3D, but look at the music behind that game. They still use it today. On every Zelda, you're going to see a reference to Ocarina of Time somewhere. Why? Because the music drew you in 
so much so that you really felt like Link, which is his name. He's meant to link you to this world. So you get so engrossed in this world, the music is all upbeat and you feel kitty and whatnot. You know, you're going through the forest and all of that. Sometimes the music would be a little weird, but it was meant to be weird. When you're in Jabu Jabu's belly, the, the song is freaking you out. Why? Well, if you got swallowed by a fish like Jonah, I think you, that's freak out territory. So the music is all like off. Carlo. You see that? And then... Now you get to where you grow up. Spoilers for people who have never played this game. You know, it's you grow up. Old. It's not a spoiler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you catch the sarcasm on that. But you know, you grow up, and Link grows up. He gets his childhood stripped from him, and then he has to go to the Forest Temple. The Forest Temple has the 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 time signature is off. You know, you've got this humming in the background. It sounds ghostly and ghastly. What is going on? Well, think about it. When you leave the Temple of Time, the first thing that you see is this undead zombie trying to kill you all over the town that used to be all happy and chipper. Your, your childhood is gone. So how is Koji Kondo going to relay that to people? All the music of the adult timeline in Ocarina of Time is vastly different it is gloomy it's dark it's it's so he had to portray that because it told a story you don't have that today you know you you just you just don't get that because it's not about telling a story it's just about making your head bob as long as i can keep your attention like that for you to buy this game we're good fair enough because i and I, I appreciate the bringing up Zelda to, to support your reference um, to what you said that you, you hear um, iterations from previous um, from Zelda Ocarina of Time. You can hear that in future Zelda games. Even in Zelda Breath of the Wild, you hear the Zora's Domain theme right. that was in 64 in Breath of the Wild. It's just done up differently. So I can definitely um, agree and attest to that. But um, you talked about like the how we've been touching on just the art of making music this this whole this whole time and we can both agree that it is in fact a spiritual process when you are creating music so mm -hmm. from a spiritual perspective and we don't even have to limit this to gaming but just in general since this is a, a music a music conversation as well what songs have strongly impacted you wow um there, there are <laughs> there's so much compared to uh not compared to but as long as we're talking just music in general um i listen to a lot of things i did not limit myself to one genre because of the house that grew up in that is where i had that impact but because i'm listening to uh yasunori matsuda and then combined with the stuff that you know our dads did and everything i'm used to listening to everything so certain songs um are we talking just video games or are we talking just music I'm, in general i'll give you the full scope go for it all right the full scope uh all of my dad's stuff influenced me uh even to the point of not trusting the government you know um that that always it always uh uh helped so uh shout out to them with that didn't agree with everything but um i love the way that he was able to change genres so um you know the family stand always influenced me um growing up believe it or not i actually appreciated the video game music more than than others uh because i like sound i like uh so it's not so much what songs did it it's what type of songs I love three four time signature you know and that's more Celtic music you know like uh, that's where you get a lot of your Yatsunori Matsudas he, he would use that a lot um, I loved uh, a lot of the sonic music you could hear me listening to that all day you know uh, especially when uh, June Sino uh, came in Sonic Adventure mm -hmm. so um, a lot of that stuff influenced me and uh, it really brought me to that. And when you talk about even gospel music, uh, first of all, gospel is the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of things that people consider gospel music that I don't. 
I just consider it inspirational or, you know, you might be speaking a psalm. If you tell somebody, hey, you can make it, that's not the gospel. But um, once again, that's another sermon. <laughs> so uh, even from what we would call gospel music, there's certain sounds that I like to gravitate to because I understand what they represent. Drums, war, you know, certain things. I like to, to hear that if I'm trying to be in a war mindset. I love a lot of the strings and the orchestrated. It puts that calmness to certain things. So I understand whatever mood I'm actually trying to be in, that's the song that I want to listen to. So when you talk about what songs have have really stuck with me, it's just basically it depends on what mood that I wanted. You know, so um, that's without getting too specific, without naming too many different songs that's that's really what stuck with me now, the more you. the type and, the, and that i feel you likewise for me uh stuff uh, that you know my pops did definitely uh strongly impacted me uh to this day i still remembered where he would have me listen to different songs and pinpoint every the car single test. instrument <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that 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 i could hear so it's like just from stuff like that it caused me to like just hear music differently and as a kid it's like i appreciate a lot of gaming music to the point where it's like a lot of the very old the the usos and everything like a lot of their music a lot of the old sonic tracks those are some of my first samples like where a lot of people a lot of music producers go into sampling like soul and like the like the classics you know you know the anita bakers or um Mm -hmm or the CV Wonders, like people would sample a lot of stuff like that. I was sampling, you know, Castlevania Symphony yep. of I was sampling uh, Sonic um, the Hedgehog 3. I was sampling Streets of Rage 1. I was right. sampling Street Fighter Pilot 2. Wings. I, I even sampled Pilot Wings, of course. Yep. I sampled, like those were the games that I sampled first. I even went and sampled, um, I f- Forgive me, I forgot who, who the composer, but for Final Fantasy VIII, you know, I even, that was Uematsu. That was Uematsu. Okay, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't too sure. I wasn't too sure. Uematsu's a legend. Um, yeah. I even sampled stuff from even anime. I sampled stuff from um, Cowboy uh, Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. Oh, Trigun. What's it? I forgot his name. I forgot his name from um, the composer for Dragon Ball Z. You, you don't. Uh, I forget, I, there because there were different ones for GT the, the, the and, one, and the, uh, the one who got the guy in trouble. I oh my gosh, I forgot his name. The one oh, that, uh, Bruce. Bruce Fal- Fal- Falconor. Bruce, yeah, uh, Bruce Falconor. Yeah. Bruce Fal. Are you gonna sample some of Bruce Falconor? You can't. Joint? Well, let me tell you about that. Um, for those of you who who um, because I was doing some research on him mm-hmm. when he had first gotten the job. Now you know it was a team, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um. For those of you who do music, we usually know it's a team. But, you know, if you just have your name, then that's where they got in trouble with that. But um, he was told. Now, tell me if it's not our generation. He was told that they need to have music on the show 24-7. They always had music during his seasons. Because they told him that the kids cannot just pay attention to a show. And if you think about it, when we're playing our video games growing up, there's always some music going on. So what Bruce's team did is they designed themes. And everybody knew as soon as Vegeta started talking, you're going to hear that doom. You're going to hear that bell. Okay, you're going to hear that, you know, whenever Dende was, was healing somebody, you would hear that little, you know, those pizzicato strings and all that. Everybody had themes. So, you know, they, he was told to just have music all the time. So when they composed their music, people had themes. And then you get the, I think one of my favorite tracks is when Gohan angers, you know, I'm like, and you got that piano, that's his theme. So that was just our generation of music is just themes, man. People were associated with the themes and, and you know, Bruce Falconer and, and his team and what they did, I think it really put Dragon Ball Z on the map. Even if they don't have him now, man, a lot of us grew up with that, you know? Cool. Well, I'm going to actually let us go to a quick break because we've been 
we've unpacked and talked a lot and i want to <laughs> give everyone just a small break please go ahead and definitely go out and subscribe you know go out and uh support because content creators are content creators and everything if and if you're definitely somebody who is looking to sharpen up yourself in the faith i highly recommend you subscribe so we'll be back shortly appreciate that you guys soon But then you have the uh, Phileos love. And uh, I looked it up and this is where we get Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. So um, this love is more companionship. It's a friendship. It's more platonic. You can have friends who love each other deeply, right? But they're friends. There's no intention of having a sexual relationship. You can have two men who love each other as friends. They have common interests, right? So you can have two friends, let's say that they have the common interest of praying together. And these two men, they pray together on everything. They are blood brothers. They, they pray together for everything. If somebody needs prayer for something, they call their brother up. And these two brothers, they're really close. Those are friendship loves. You can have a friendship bond over other things, you know, working out or because or, I like to to exercise it could be a lot of things but they could be very close as a friendship bond this is the type of bond that David had for Jonathan okay so when the Bible talks about how they loved each other more that David loved Jonathan it seemed like he loved Jonathan more than he loved women what does that mean it didn't mean that they were saying that David was gay okay so we have to really understand what they're talking about you can have friends that you tell them that you love them but it's because your bond is so close because of the things that you have in common with each other. It and welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that commercial break. And I'm really going to dive into the last half. I want to give you guys one commercial break because these questions I feel is all gonna flow better if we just ask them straight through. And I wanted to ask your opinion on this for Yofi. Um, you as a Christian yourself, you and I could both agree that there is not much quality Christian entertainment. A lot of it is, oh, yeah. a lot of it could be perceived as lame, a lot of it could be perceived as boring, and a lot of it can be perceived as, what's the best way I could put this? It comes off more, I use the term lightly, but preachy and cliche. <laughs> oh, that's where you're going. <laughs> preachy and, and, and cliche rather than something that's going to actually help somebody spiritually. So what is your like, what is your take on it's like the lack of Christian entertainment? And it's like to the point where you said yourself earlier, you for personal reasons you couldn't even play um smash brothers so it's like where is the line where they're not going to compromise they feel like they're compromising their faith right and, and that's a that's a good question because you know christianity is not a a one set done deal as far as everyone has to be the same way see if everyone had to be the same way then god would have just made a bunch of clones you know, but everyone's different from our DNA down to our, you know, our culture. And God doesn't sweat culture as much as we think, you know. So um, if you have Christianity in China, it might look a lot different from Christianity in America. The differences or the similarities would be the gospel, mere Christianity, as C.S. Lewis would call it. You know, we've got the death burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ with, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, but it's just, that is the crux. If we agree on that, then certain culture things are going to be different. You know, the music that we listen to is going to be different. So when you talk about Christian quality content, uh, I think that the reason as to why there's a lack of it is because certain people try to make their culture a part of Christianity. And I don't mean that your culture can't 
influence your Christianity. For instance, uh, we love games. You know, we love certain types of music. That's okay. So the thing is, is what are you looking for? If you're looking for your culture to dominate your Christianity, you're never going to find something that that uh, suits your need because you're different. So right now, you, Avadon, you're releasing a video with me on as far as gaming, Christianity, music, how does it mix? All right. So now people who are like minded like us, now we do have something that we can see. You know, so I say it's up to you if you're if you're lacking the quality content that you want start, you know, um, I'm doing some things, as I said, with my channel that is actually going to dive into a lot of this. It's amazing that you mentioned that, that you asked that because I'm thinking of and I'm not thinking I'm really praying a lot. A friend of mine, we're getting together. We're going to address these issues. You and I have had discussions on how goku relates to the actual father you know to actually god how is goku a good dad because we have things like that so people want to to experience that with their anime and their manga and yes granted there are a lot of things in manga that or manga if anyone gets offended uh there are a lot of things in there that as a christian might convict someone else you know uh, my wife sees uh, an anime like Trigun, and she's going to, well, why are they shooting each other? You know, like, that's big. But to me, I think that uh, Wolfwood, the way that he went out in Trigun, was one of the most spiritual aspects ever. I could see, you know, Christianity in that. Some people can see Christianity in other things. So when you're talking about content... You've got to get that stuff out there because there are people who think like you who would want content in this area, in manga, in anime, in video games, in um, fantasy novels. I wrote a fantasy novel, you know, and uh, trying to turn it into a video game. We're going to see if that, if that goes anywhere. But it's not out there because you're not doing it. So you start, and when you shine a light, Somebody else is going to see, oh, maybe I can do this too. And it's going to, it's going to get them to do that. And it works the same, thing, the same way with any part of Christianity. A lot of people don't pray. The reason they don't pray is because they don't think that they could do it. But when they see you actively putting your life down to sincerely pray for them, you know, then they're going to say, hey, I could shine a light too. You know, so that's the reason that I think that there's a lack of quality content. I just think that people are not doing it. You know, God put the the idea in you and you just never went forward with it. So now other people who would have been blessed by your content, they don't have it. You know, um, I'll give this small example because this is my embarrassment as far as Christian business. I had an idea of scripture cookies. I like Chinese food. And I'm just like, why did they always give me learn Chinese. I don't really want to learn Chinese. But what if we had a little scripture and an encouragement in that thing? You know, instead of having it be the shape of a fortune cookie, make it the shape of a little Bible or something, or put a little Jesus thing on there or something, and give people some scripture and encouragement. You know, I never went forward with that business. God gave me the idea. Two years later, I went to a Christian bookstore. There were scripture cookies right there in the shape of little Bibles and they have little scriptures in there and somebody else, God told me, he said, he told me, he said, that's what you get. That's what you get, Yopi, because I gave you the idea and you didn't go forward with it. So now I had to give it to somebody else and they're making money off of it and you're not. And people are being blessed by them and not by you because you didn't do it. You see? So I'm like, now God's giving your friend, like you mentioned, she wants to do things with manga and, and anime and from a Christian perspective, hey, girl, go out there and do it because people are going to be blessed by that. You know, people are going to be people. Are, so many people are blessed by Abaddon's channel, man. I'm blessed by that. I never thought even when you started, I'm just like this guy is sitting here playing video games all day. He's not going to. And I'm just like, but then as you watch the channel, you're like, man, you know, a lot of people are really blessed by this. Why? Because God gave you the idea. And you move forward with it, bro. Like, so, you know, I, I bless you for that. And uh, it encourages me. 
And I'm like, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And to everybody else, Christian content, let's get it out there. You know, um, get it out there. Big shout out because the person we were talking, we was um talking um during break. We gotta have to give a big shout out to uh the big home, the big friend, the great friend, like who really helped me a lot in terms of just shaping me business wise. Uh, Leah Judea, she's really come trying to come up with a nonprofit, uh, a nonprofit organization that's gonna be a Christian based organization that's gonna feature all of these things, and it's like. Like you said, a lot of things you, you share, I'm sure that that'd be a blessing because it's like, it's, 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 it's really, it's really real. Like coming out with games, anime, manga, and getting people on board to do that. It's, it's a, like you said, as you mentioned with Bruce Falconer, it takes a team to build these things. Even though there's one name, there right. it takes a team to build things. And there's a body of Christ, man. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing and it's like i want to see more content like that i want to see more things like that i want it to be so it's not weird look out for my channel then bro <laughs> we're gonna be doing some content we're gonna be doing some really good content coming up that's like my advertisement right there i guess i'm not used to advertising and telling people to subscribe bro, and it's stuff it's all but... good like seriously watch out for his <laughs> channel because it's like i want to see more content like that it's like it shouldn't be weird that I'm doing an interview like this for you and people see that it's Good Friday or the mention of God and it's like people feel weird towards that. It's like I would I want a place where that's normal and that's not looked look down as crazy like, oh, why are you talking about that for? Like, let that be cool. Like, that, mm -hmm. that's, that, I think every Christian content creator that I have come in contact with, that is the heart of their message. Like, make talking about God, make stuff bible related cool again that's what you do that's what leah does that's what i'm doing that's like make that cool again but jesus was really cool bro i mean he was he was really cool a lot of people try to make it look like he was mr rogers no offense to mr rogers you were really cool too <laughs> but for today 2020 man nobody wants to watch mr rogers you know he had a movie man come on and, and the movie was was pretty interesting but the way that it was, he, he was he was very patient. In 2020, like I said, people don't have that kind of patience. I try to show Mr. Rogers to my kids, and they're just like, can we do something else? Because they don't want to wait for that. And granted, you do need to build patience. But I'm just saying that Jesus was really relevant, and the Bible talks about surrounding yourself with people who know the times. Man, if you're trying to reach a community, there is a large community of christians who feel condemned for even you know like you said playing a game you know or listening to music that's not gospel i actually listen to music that's not gospel you know that's not considered gospel but do i listen to things that are vulgar no that convicts me so i don't do that but as far as just listening to a piece hey man this is a beethoven piece as i said i love the classical stuff man i love the strings i love the way the pizzicato does this i love the way the force you know you listen to um uh, uh mars the god of war you listen to that song uh what is it called he had all types of uh planets mm -hmm. but mars was very star wars used it and and they used that theme a lot it's very powerful so you have a lot of christians who don't even understand this culture thing, man. They don't even understand that, yes, there are certain things that, as a Christian, no one should hear. No one wants to, as a Christian, hear stuff like, you know, um, just stuff that will go unnamed because of its vulgarity and such. But there are certain things that you have to really learn as a, as a body of Christ. That's you personally. Now, I'm not going to go blast beethoven down the street because as a christian i don't want to mp i don't want to impose that on to other people because that's just a cultural thing but i can do it on youtube you know i can go on youtube and we can discuss these things hey if you guys like manga i like manga too you know you guys like uh, uh video games avidon likes video games too and he's a christian so he can help you whereas somebody else who doesn't like any video game at all would just tell you okay you played um frogger today uh you're going to hell and 
I'm against, I'm heavily against that. It's like with people who make full sermons about like the whole Pokemon cards and like little demon cards and everything. And I'm like, yeah, they're demon possessed, man. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> and I'm like, when I looked at, <laughs> he's joking, but he's joking. But when I looked at how, people, oh no, I, you know my stance on Pokemon. I hate those things, man. I I, I know. I mean, you. I just I don't condemn anybody else. You know, like I know what you're saying. I, that is the joke. The joke is how... that you're going to hell if you have a Pokemon card. Please don't tell people that stuff. And <laughs> it's like when I when I saw people doing stuff like that, and it's like. My whole question is, it's like, why isn't only profitable speech coming from, you know, your mouth right now? It's like, let us, let like, let what you say actually be for building up one another. And if you're right. not building somebody up to be stronger, but instead you're just pointing at their wrongs, or you're pointing at the wrongs of society, you're pointing at the wrongs of everything else, but you're not doing anything to build up, it's like then at the same time and this is not even to go down a rabbit hole are you a bringer of life or you're a bringer of destruction at that point because you're yeah i mean full-on beerus man you're just destroying without actually uh causing something to come to fruition you know it's just like if you're getting to if you have a detective if you have two different detectives and i view christianity as being detectives you know if there's a murder and one detective just says well, uh, I think that uh, so-and-so did this, candidate A, all right? And you say, well, no, candidate A didn't do it. Candidate A is wrong. That's bad. Uh, we shouldn't look at that. Okay, well, then who did do it? Well, I'm not really offering anything. I'm just talking about how bad candidate A is. That's what a lot of people do with your anime and video games. All you do is talk about how bad it is, but you don't actually offer anybody a way to live. If you're not doing that and you're just pointing out how bad Pokemon is, look, I could point out how bad Pokemon is, but I can also point out that there are certain people who discover a lot of truths in that, man. I've discovered, man, some of my best sermons come from Dragon Ball Z, man. Some of my best sermons that people will look at on my channel and they'll be like, Yofi, this really touched me. Where'd you get that? And I'll be like, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I don't like the third game, by the way. Yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't really... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, mm. Anyway, <laughs> <let's move on. laughs> uh, but I wanted to actually move on to before we go down too deep down that rabbit hole because I know how far we can go with that. I wanted to really ask because you talked about business, you talked about um, the, the spiritual cookies, and you even we're even talking about moving forward as businesses down the line. So how does one being like a cell phone biz businessman or businesswoman or entrepreneur, or even an investor, how does one walk down that line without losing sight of what's most important? And in some cases, even losing themselves. Um, well, well, you say that like it's a bad thing. Sometimes you do need to lose yourself in order to well, become when i say lose yourself okay let me rephrase that maybe so let down your standards let me rephrase that uh lose yourself more so to the point that from the person that you are created to be ah well like so you don't lose uh, that you don't lose that right you don't lose sight of 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 what your your goal is and your purpose okay exactly. well that's a really good question man see see guys these are awesome questions I really hope you subscribe to this channel because this guy comes up with these questions. So um, the way that I look at you, you write things down and you keep sight of what your vision is. If my vision and, you know, a lot of people like to just put God in front to make it appeal to authority. God said, God said, but I'm thinking if you have a vision, if you have a goal, I want to read people who uh, um, watch anime watch anime play video games and such well then what you do and what your topics you need to remain true to that so when you're making a video or if you're making a game or if you're trying to do any business does it line up with the overall sight of what of what you said the gospel is the death burial resurrection and ascension of jesus christ and it is by faith okay through grace okay it's always through grace it's not through works 
that we inherit the precious promises. So knowing that, if I'm going to release a video, or if I'm going to say anything, does it line up with those core principles? So if you're going to lose yourself, you're going to lose yourself because you're going to compromise the core principles that you have set. When I release a video, I need to check, is this going to compromise? Is this going to lead people away from death, burial, resurrection, and ascension? If that be the case, I don't need to release it. Even if it's something that doesn't bother me, I don't need to release it because then by me losing them or leading them away from this core purpose, I'm going away from it. Because remember, people are only going to follow you. Even after, as you follow Christ, people are going to follow you. So if you find yourself deviating from the core vision of what's set up, whatever that may be, whether it might not be a Christian business, you know, it might not be. But if you find yourself deviating from that, then the people who follow you are deviating from that, which means you're leaving. You have to leave first before your followers do. So if you've got a million people following you, but you've deviated from the core, you were the first one that left and a million people are following you, which means that if you get back to the core principles, those million people might leave. They did it to Jesus. Jesus went from a mega church to 11 members in one day. Oh, you know, so I would say to, in order to hungry, stay true man. to that, they were hungry. That. <laughs> they were hungry. They just wanted some food. They just wanted some food. They just wanted some bread, some bread and, and fish, man. Barbecue. <laughs> Oh, you know, man. but um, just to move down forward though, um, and just in the line of it, thank you for answering that by the way, because just to chime in a little bit on that, it's I feel as though people lose themselves, as you said, when you deviate from the core principles, but at the same time, when people don't necessarily seek, you know, and keep God at the forefront, I feel as right. though a lot of us, a lot of us, we're in the passenger seat. And we ask God to be the guide when we don't know. But when we see things that excite us. Oh, almost, I got this. It's almost like move over. It's almost like, uh, better yet, uh, remember the old uh, driving school cars where they had like the steering wheel in the, in the passenger seat? <laughs> it's almost like we take, we're like, we're in, a, in those cars and we say, oh, wait a second, I got this. And we I got control this. of the car instead of letting God still lead all the way. And, you know, I'll be the first to say, I have, you know, done that before. I feel like I, feel like I got this. And I have to say, you know what? Hold up. You know, I let me drive back for a little bit. And it's, it's, it's easy because it can be a really dangerous step because the thing about you taking that wheel, the crazy part about this is, God doesn't take the wheel back from you. Mm -hmm. That is the scary part sometimes. He wants you to have the wheel. Like he he won't take the wheel. Say, okay, you got this, and he's gonna let you. That's my see. son. That's my daughter. I want them to have the wheel. So, so it's like he lets you see where you're gonna go. Now the question is, if have you been studying how he's been driving? Because mm. you haven't been studying how he's been driving, then are you going to go in the in the direction in the same? I knew he was he going to preach go? before this was over, man. I knew it. Huh? I knew you were going to preach before this was over. <laughs> Stop! Stop! <laughs> Stop! I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> I, I blame everyone. I blame him. This always happens when I'm talking to him. Uh, um, yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, seriously though, if are you gonna go in that same direction? That's 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 the key, and that's the thing I feel as though everyone looks. Every, a lot of people, universe, look as God is just, you know, smite you down if you don't do what I tell you to do and everything. And it's like we're looking at. I think that's Zeus. <laughs> yeah, you're mixing them up with that uh, Zeus, that giant lightning bolt. bearded white guy with white, the lightning yeah, bolts and that is definitely zeus but um, that's not the father but it's like a lot of us you know dip into that in, into that mythology per se and that's not the case it's this it's god will allow you now he will speak to you now if you keep going into a different direction that he will speak of like 
you know you're going in the wrong direction right like there will yeah. be warnings and there's just sometimes it's like the dangerous part that gets into it is we'll get so knee deep into what we desire the things that we're lusting after that we won't necessarily see the error in our ways until maybe it's too late sometimes and maybe there are some cases that there are some saving graces and we can make a u-turn but i will say it's it's still really important. that's why i said it's really important not to not to lose yourself because it's like it's really easy to fall down that route but at the same time i will say it's also very easy to make a u-turn if you are willing to right. yield and say wow i'm Driving we don't condemn ourselves. See, I told you, huh? I told you he was gonna preach, but you don't condemn yourself, bro. Like, um, and I'm not speaking just to to Abaddon or Yofi, to you guys, man. Look, that's a part of the mortal experience. You know, we do make those errors, and I'm not saying that we should. Of course, you shouldn't, but if you do, and you're a Christian, and you see yourself going off, as Abaddon said earlier. You get you get up and you get back on the right path. The GPS is always going to tell you recalculating and it'll tell you the right path. You can still drive down the wrong path, but the GPS will always autocorrect to tell you the best way to get back on the right path. And that's where, you know, I look at God as being that GPS, you know, like if if Yofi ever gets off and I'll start preaching some stuff like uh, about the times, about the politics and who's doing this. And and uh, it's easy to get caught up in that stuff. But then God is just like, okay, I do want you to speak on political issues, but not like that, you know, and then that GPS will auto correct me. That's just me personally, you know, so uh, it, it's just you don't condemn yourself, dude. Like you, you've got to, to understand that is a part of life and God appreciates you taking the steering wheel for that time. He appreciates you doing that. Any dad, any father, we're fathers, appreciate your kids trying. You know, like, look at look at my son, you know, look at my kid. They're doing their best. They're doing that. All right, you messed that up. Let me show you how it's done. And then I want you to try it again. You know, boom. That's the father, man. I love, man. Let me stop talking, dude, because cause I'm. <laughs> so, okay. So, we, you guys are actually getting blessed with something more because this is like a side of conversation that I, you know, a few people know, a few people that know me personally know that this is very easy for me to get into this type of conversation. Uh, I try to tame myself on Twitter these days because y'all yeah, argue too much on Twitter for my, for my <laughs> <laughs> so I, yes, I want no, I, I want no parts, you know, I want no parts in that. So, um, I want to know if he's not on Twitter. I really want to focus on for um, Christian content creators because I, for some reason, I feel like there are Christian content creators watching, whether they ascribe to being one publicly or not. For a Christian content creator to want to approach things like Patreon and YouTube membership and just other ways of monetization to provide for them. I mean, a lot of us have grown up with the false theology of you know, money is the root of all evil and everything, which why I'm- Oh, really you didn't read that. that. Huh? Oh, they didn't read that properly. <laughs> or it's, yeah, it's, yeah, we, this is just a false state. That's why I call it false, you know, towards that. <laughs> but a lot of people have that stigma where it's like, it's, it's hard to do anything business oriented. I find that a lot of us in the, in, in this circle in particular, like we can be so good and dynamic in the christian perspective but it's like when it comes to business a lot of us drop the ball well let me say this without trying to preach i know we got to close but um uh jesus was wealthy people forget that mm -hmm. that um back in those days if your father was a carpenter you had money so People think that Jesus is this vagabond, like he just wandered around like Johnny Appleseed or something. When the people ripped off the roof of the house and, and laid the paralyzed man in, whose house was that? That was Jesus' house. He had a place to live. As, much, as a matter of fact, if his father was a carpenter, he probably had multiple houses. Now, if we look at somebody who has multiple houses today, or multiple cars, or multiple anything we think that they're speaking a prosperity gospel all right so we have to be careful of that 
just because somebody has money doesn't necessarily make them a bad person or a charlatan. We see these videos and exposings and we have to be careful of that. If you're a YouTube content creator, you want to start a Patreon. You have to remember this. YouTube and Patreon, as far as uh, YouTube subscribers and, and being monetized for it, you're offering a service. If you're offering a service, God says that he is worthy of his pay. All right. So that means that if people are going to pay you for a service, then that's okay. Now, if you're doing it because of money, that's where you get into the love of money being a root to all kinds of evil. We're not doing this for the money. Okay. That is not our main motivation. If your main motivation is getting the content out, right? My main motivation when I do anything, for instance, there's going to be a lot of content with manga and, and video games and such. There's going to be a, a, a lot of that. It's going to address the modern day and politics and all types of things. There are going to be a lot of analogies. However, this is something that I love to do anyway. We talk about this all the time. So if we're offering this same thing that we love to do as a service to somebody, then yes, Patreon is God. God will subscribe to your Patreon. He will subscribe to your YouTube channel. Things that I'm not particularly too adept in, but because they love it and they keep the vision in mind, they keep our family values. I like it. So God will subscribe to you if you're if you're a Christian content creator. I, and it's a service, so you deserve to get that pay. I always go to that scripture. Let him that stole steal no more, but let him work with his hands the thing that is good, and these are good things, right, that he may have to give to those in need. And that's what I'm doing with my YouTube. That's what you're doing with your YouTube. A lot of stuff that we're doing, it's only going to help us with our house. Why? So that we don't have to worry about paying this or paying that so that we can have time to give to those in need so that we can give to the needy so that we can give to the poor that's where a lot of our christian hearts are anyway but a lot of us don't have any kind of money to do that so if you're offering a service go ahead and do it you know it, it, it might you, you might have some naysayers but uh i think you should read matthew mark luke and john you know jesus faced naysayers every single day you know, and they did have money when they said uh, it would take a year's worth to feed this many people. That means that they had a year's worth of money with them. They could have bought food for all those 5,000 people. They had a year's worth of money with them. How many Christians have a year's worth of money? Or are we buying up toilet paper? <laughs> right? I mean, oh, so... Man. Yo, toilet paper and you know what? No, I'm not gonna get into that. I'll get upset. Let's not do it. Let's not yeah, do it. I'm, I'm gonna get upset. <laughs> um, they, for those of you who are watching this, uh, post the this 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 timeline that we're in, where in a timeline where m many places in America are on lockdown due to COVID-19. So, but um, or that 2020. This. <laughs> <laughs> this, was a, this was a great a great episode um i want to close off with one last question thank first of all thank you once again for having this episode this is man, a, i appreciate very, you having me a very special episode and anytime man this is a very special episode and i wanted to hmm, how should i word this i wanted to just let you end off with what advice would you give uh content creators and even and even content creators of the faith if there is something that you know now that you wish you knew when you first started content creating what advice would that be uh aside from what we've said i hope and pray that this has inspired more christian uh people and even just people in general because god loves you whether you care for him or not uh i hope that this has inspired you but get started, move. I don't care whether you have the iPhone 4 right now. You can get started. People will follow you because they're following you. Not because they're following your high quality. Not because you have uh, um, you know, more money 
and you put all of that into your channel, you see a lot of low budget stuff that people absolutely love. Some of my favorite films are some low budget gospel stuff because of the message that it tells. So people are going to follow your narrative. You know, they're going to follow you because of that. So don't not get started. If I'm if I'm going to give advice to anybody, don't let anything hold you back. I don't have the best quality stuff and I live in an area you I think yeah, we both live in areas that are not exactly the most high functioning internet areas, but we're still able to get these things out and God will grow you as you move. You know, I like to think of it as the lepers. They were healed as they went. When they got started, they probably looked really bad, but as they kept moving, healing is taking place. Deliverance is taking place. So you guys, if I could give you any advice, don't look at other channels and see how big they are and say, I don't have that. I can't work like that for God because look at how they you're comparing yourself. Don't do that. Just get out there, do what you need to do. Eventually you will, or even if you don't, God will have people to follow you as you follow him. So I'd give that advice to anybody. Don't let anything stop you from, from doing what you love to do. You love to get this content out and you are Christian, man, do it. God will refine the things that need to be refined along the way. Nice. Nice. That, see, this episode, I'm, I'm really happy we got, we got this episode this month of April. You guys, you guys are, are packed. Last week, we had Spawn Wave on here. This week, we have my cousin, Yofi. And for those of you who are, who are still watching, if you made it to the end of this video, uh, we have Player Essence next week. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, and I already announced the schedule on Twitter anyway by the time you guys see this. And we have a uh, cat from a casual gamer at the end of the month. So we have a lot of content creators coming up. And the month of May is just going to get even better. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to Yofi's channel. And if you haven't already, this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to this channel as well. Uh, we have done three months worth of episodes already. So wow, we had, yeah, amazing. Every almost every week, amazing. We, had, we have we started we started in December, so it's like go ahead and check out the the backlog of videos. There's a lot of value here and again even if you're not a christian i hope you know this still resonated with you i hope this is still valuable to you and we are going to get on out of here so if you liked this video hit that like button hit that subscribe button and most of all most of all you make sure you share this with a friend this is avadon and yofi smith and we are out peace <laughs>